Hi, I'm Paul Royer, and in this video, I'll be giving you a brief tutorial on how to make XML SOAP calls to your Thriftly server using jQuery in your web browser. Now, I will be using the same API that we set up in our previous example, so if you're curious on how that's set up, you can go check out those videos on our YouTube channel. Um, you can also search for it on YouTube by typing in how to build a fast web API in C Sharp with Thriftly. Now that's available for C Sharp and Java, so you can search for either one. I will review it here briefly, however, so we know what we're dealing with when we make these calls from the front end. So we defined our string service class, and in this class we have two function calls. We have our join call, which takes two strings and returns a concatenation of those strings. And we have the two upper call, which takes one string and returns the uppercase version of that string. So let's go ahead and start our server. And we should see this familiar Thriftly developer window pop up here. Now we're going to leave all of these settings exactly the same as we had them before, with the exception of the protocol. We're actually going to change it so that the default protocol is SOAP. Now I say default because you still can request other protocols from the server using a header, which we'll see, but we want the default to be SOAP. If you don't include the header, you will get SOAP, and it will expect SOAP from the client. The encoding will leave the same, everything else is fine. I will note the port here because I'm going to show you how you can actually test this locally because it is running off of my laptop right now. Um, and make sure your gateway is enabled and that you've selected the nearest gateway to you. If you're in the United States, that's probably going to be Texas. We also have uh, Brazil, Japan, etc. Make sure you choose the server that's nearest you to get the lowest, lat lowest latency and best performance. So I'm going to start my server. It's going to load that up in my web browser with all my endpoint information. And the part that I'm particularly interested in is this services section right here. We have our string service that we defined. And this right here is the address that we're going to make our calls to. So I'm going to hit this little button here. It's going to copy that for me. And in my notepad over here, I'm going to paste that for later. And I'm going to click on this just to view our documentation. So we have two calls under the calls section. We have our join call that takes two strings and returns a string. And we have our two upper call that takes one string and returns a string. So it looks like everything has been set up properly. So let's build our front end. I'm going to be using VS code for this and I'm just going to do this pretty much from scratch. I'm going to copy and paste a little bit of code in the interest of time. But what I'm going to set up here first, is just a place for us to dump our results when we get a response from the server. So I'm just gonna have a pre tag and a code tag with the ID of output. The reason I use pre is so that things stay nicely formatted um, when in our response, because uh, pre respects white space and new lines and all that stuff. Uh, we are gonna need a few external JavaScript tools or libraries. So let's get those in here. First one is going to be jQuery. We need jQuery in here. So I'm going to grab that from one of the uh, available libraries out there. I'm going to be using the Google APIs library, uh, jQuery 3.2.1, the minified version. So that's good to go. And then I'm actually going to be using two third-party libraries as well. I'm going to be using jQuery.soap, uh, which is, I downloaded a local copy right here. But if you want to grab this for yourself, so it's available at that address right there. And then I'm also going to be using jQuery.format. And this is going to format our XML nicely in our response. That one, I also downloaded a local copy, but you can get it here at uh, github.com at that address. And those are gonna make our lives way easier when we're dealing with all this uh, XML, uh, save us a lot of time. So let's go back to our file here, my simple.html. And now I'm gonna write my script. I'm just gonna do it right in line here. We keep it all in one file, easy to see and understand. And I'm gonna copy and paste some code here, but we'll go through it line by line. 
Now, this call is possible because of this SOAP library that I imported. And you'll notice that this dot SOAP call is very, very similar to your standard jQuery Ajax call with a few minor differences. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is use that URL that we copied. So I'm going to put that back in here. And just to review, that is coming from our documentation here under the string service. That's this URL right here. So you can click that button to copy it. I had already copied it to my clipboard. So there it is right there. There's our URL. The method I'm going to test first is my two upper method. And the data section is going to be a JavaScript object. And this jQuery.soap library is going to convert this object to the proper XML that will get sent to our server. So we don't have to worry about <laughs> formatting the XML at all. We just send it like this and it's gonna take care of the rest. So we have our one parameter here, the string one parameter, and we set the value to make me uppercase, please. We have two headers that we're gonna pass. We're gonna say, hey, the content type we're dealing with is application XML. And then this server protocol header is a header specific to Thriftly. This is where we let Thriftly know which protocol we want. We're going to be sending you soap and we want soap back. Now, we don't need this header right now because we set the default to soap. So we could exclude this and it would probably still work. But it's best to include it only because, for example, let's say somebody stops our server and restarts it and changes the default to like JSON RPC or, or Thrift or some other uh, protocol. By having this header here, we're telling the server, we want SOAP and we're sending you SOAP. And because the server is a multi-protocol server, it will still serve up that SOAP. It'll serve up all the protocols at the same time as long as you're including that header. So this will work no matter what, no matter what the default is. Uh, and then the last one here is this success property. This right here is a callback function with a response parameter. This is the response that we are going to get from the server. And this is where we use our format library. It has a very convenient call, the uh, format call that lets us specify what type of data we're going to be expecting to format and how we want it formatted. So we're going to tell it, hey, we're dealing with XML here, so format it. Uh, as XML. And then right here, we're just doing a simple jQuery selector. Oh, this should be just output, not output code. There we go. So we're going to grab our output ID and stuff that text in there that we get back and that we've already formatted. So this should run right when we load it in the browser and we should see a response in our browser properly formatted if I didn't make any mistakes. So let's check it out. In VS Code, you can actually just right click right here and say open in browser. And there we go. We got an XML call successfully sent and responded to from our Thriftly server. And right here we can see our ret val, make me uppercase please. It has been converted to uppercase. So our call's working. Now let's try a couple other things. So as I said, let's do a uh, local call. So I'm gonna do a local host call to that port that I noted and see if we can just make a local call. We're not gonna go through the gateway. Just right here on my machine, I'm gonna do a quick little test call. So I changed it to local host. Sorry, let me look at that again. Changed it to local host on the port instead of using the gateway address. So let's refresh this. There we go. So we're now we're making local test calls. And that's it. I mean, we, we've got an XML SOAP test call working. It's not very powerful or dynamic, but it's working. So we always start at ground zero, right? So we have a working call. Now, let me show you a little bit more advanced example. I'm not gonna go through this code in detail. However, um, I did want to kind of show you a little test interface that I built uh, using this same API. So we have uh, both of our calls with all the fields being dynamic here. And then in my script file, uh, you'll notice here in my SOAP call, I actually, before I send it, I display the request. And then after I send it, if I get a 
success, I call this display result call. And if I get an error, I display error. The only difference is it changes the color of the box. So it's going to be either blue or red, just so we can see if our error handler is working. So let's take a look at this guy. I'm going to open this up in my browser. Did a little CSS to make it look nice here. So let's do some testing. We'll put in our same URL there. We'll go through the gateway this time. And I'm just going to say, let's join two strings. And I'm going to click join. It's going to send off my request right here with my join and two parameters there. And this is my response with both of them concatenated. Let's join two strings. So that one's working. Let's check our two upper. Please make me upper case. There we go. There's our response, or sorry, there's our request and our response. And one last time, just to beat a dead horse, let's change it to our local host, do our join call. Cool. That was a little bit quicker. It should be because we're running it off of our local machine instead of going through our gateway. Test our two upper call. And just to see if our error handler that we defined previously is working, let's send it an empty string. And there you go, we got an error. Change the color to red there, let us know. Oops, you got an error code and our error message string one must be defined. And that was defined in our API over here. You can see there the exception that we threw. So everything is working properly. And that's pretty exciting. Within a few minutes, we've got a server up and running and we're making XML SOAP calls in our browser. So have fun with this. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact any member of our team. We also have a support forum available at support.thriftly.io. So shoot us a question there and we're pretty good about responding to those as quick as we can. Um, make sure you check out our channel. On a regular basis, we're going to be continuing to release videos from time to time, uh, showcasing some of the features we still have in store. And that's it, guys. I hope you have a great day.